the Sculptor Factory was in fact itself um, both a tram car depot and uh, an electricity generating station. Now the electricity was initially generated for the tramway system which opened in 1898 but it also offered to the corporation a su supply of electricity to light the city streets. And what many people may not realise is that that area of the South Parish and the South Side of Cork was an absolute transport hub. And I'm thinking now as I'm saying this, I want to try and pick a year. If we could imagine 1930, standing outside where the Sculptor Factory is now and looking towards the river. Behind us we would have had an electricity generating power station, side by side with a four road depot for storing 35 electric trams. To our left hand side, which is where the Elysian Tower and associated apartments are now, we would have had an extensive railway station serving the lines to West Cork. Right ahead of us where Metal Products were for many years would have been the railway line to Blackrock Passage in Crosshaven. And just beyond at the city quays we would have had an extremely busy shipping port. So the South Parish, certainly this area of it, was a hive and a hub for transport until the 1930s. Helm held tramcars, bucking buoyant. One track wonders how they sped. Trams that flung great iron clangers. Trams that in the loops stopped dead. Trams that on their rain-wet rails like iron argosies went by. Wires that whispered transport secrets. Trolley roads that slaked the sky. Cork in tram times I'll remember. Memories that shake the dead. Bungle tons of iron thunder run their railroads through my head. Been like you know, it was a generative kind of building. It was a powerhouse. It was a, it was a repair place for trains. It always seemed to be a place of restoration or generation. You know yeah. what I mean? So it was either, and we would still see it as that kind of generative force of creativity. Now it was always a place of industrial labour. It was always a place of work. And I think that's it has that kind of presence. It's a work building, and we don't dress it up to be anything else. It's a place of work. You know, we, it's a place of event when we put on events, but essentially it's a workplace. It's still industrial building. You know, so people are industrious, they're just doing their jobs, you know what I mean? It's a different kind of labour. And, uh, and I think that's the thing about the building, it's a very kind of permanent, calm, you know, solid kind of presence. Custom House was completed in uh, around 1820. It had previously been upriver where the Crawford is now. That Part of that building was the original Custom House uh, from around the early 1700s. And the area now where Emmet places was actually like a shipping lagoon. It was a little harbour in off the North Channel. What the Custom House has today, and is very close to my own heart, is it has a significant piece of the Cork City Railways. Now this line opened in 1912 and schemes had been muted and proposed since, since certainly 1860 when there was a floating dock. But the scheme that succeeded um, was 
proposed and designed by a man who has close connections with the Custom House and the Harbour Commissioners. He was their engineer, a man called Price, and in 1906 he proposed a street level railway and it opened on January the 1st, 1912. Now, that's the reason why, if any of you wonder about the bridges, Clontarf and Brian Baru bridge, bridges, the reason they were built was to carry the railway from Glanmire Road over to Albert Quay. Before then, and certainly since the middle of the 19th century, the furthest downstream bridges on the North Lee, on the North Lee would have been Patrick's Bridge, and on the South Lee would have been what's now Parnell Bridge. And it's also significant where the custom house is, is where the North and South Channel join, just east of it. It's probably the widest part of the river upstream. Behind the custom house, uh, I'm not sure if they still function as such or not, there would have been two big buildings and they would have been bonded warehouses as well, where spirits and uh, merchandise would be held until duties were paid. I can remember like as uh, a teenager standing outside, the, seeing the queues outside the pavilion and the film that was co had come to town was Dr. Chivago, which came out in 1965. Now even to this day it's one of my favourites and I've watched it countless times. Well I was on the 10 or 11 at the time so I never got to go in to actually see it but like there were queues stretching way back, to, up back as far as the modern so to speak, uh, shop. Uh, you know, uh, people going to the pavilion, but I can remember outside the pavilion and indeed the other cinemas in the town, you would see little still photographs like of of what you were about to see at the cinema. It sort of whetted your appetite. I can remember one time at one stage going to, a, I was a bit older at the time, but but it stuck in my memory to a cowboy film in there, and it was something like. Ten pence to get in, or two shilling, or something very cheap anyway. But it reminds me of what, of what people talk about the assembly rooms in the sense that you know, all the, uh, we were all, I was young myself at the time, but all, all the younger people were the excitement, like you know, when the hero won at the end and went off into the sunset with his, with his, uh, with, the, with the heroine, and all, all, uh, like all the baddies were were dead and the cheering. I I mean, it, uh, you know, it was a glimpse that I had of something that went on a lot in cinemas in Cork earlier on and uh, the, the pavilion then had a wonderful uh, restaurant the sort of place that was in my mother's day now I'm sure she would have gone in there in the 1930s and 40s with my father uh, it, 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 it has little white tablecloths and this uh, little sil silver uh, pepper and salt and the, the, uh, uh, like it was very elegant and I believe it was the place like for a chap to take his girl so if you could afford it to go so it, it was a it was a sorry day for Cork really when when it, when it when it when it when it went and years later then a relative of mine worked in HMV up in the classical section selling records and I time we went in there it brought back memories of what it was like to go to the pictures there I can remember seeing a picture too with uh, it was the Eddie Dushan story. Uh, uh, he, 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 he was a wonderful pianist, and that was another film I can remember seeing there. It was a great place, like, you know, and elegant too, like, you know, the plasterwork in there, it was the old time cinema, you know.